Good afternoon, everyone. Um, is this okay? Yeah? Good. Um, first of all, apologies that I'm speaking English and not Spanish. And also, thank you for the introduction, but unfortunately, I, I didn't understand it. So if I repeat myself, anything in the introduction, apologies. And the, the last apology before I start is that everything I'm going to be saying, I am really thinking that I'm speaking to the students at the school and students who are coming towards the end of their studies and also maybe some students who are just about to leave um, their studies and embark on the profession. So those of you who are not current students, I hope there's still something interesting, but maybe it's not an apology um, because I think it's really important to just for me to speak exactly to the students because they are the ones that hopefully I have something to offer. I see the title of what I'm going to speak about seems very grand and rather complicated. The skills for the employability of the instrumentalist in the 21st century. That's not actually what I was thinking of speaking about. I mean, maybe in a way. I have a simpler way of framing what I'm going to say, which is what happens next? What is the world like after studying? I have a feeling many of you students here are possibly wanting or expecting me to give you lots and lots of concrete answers. And I'm going to warn you now, I don't think there are any concrete answers. What I'm aiming to do here for maybe about the next 20 minutes, and the clock is actually in front of me ticking down, so it's quite worrying here, um, is I want to try to get you thinking just a little more about what I believe are some of the real attitudes and motivations that can help both drive us forward, as well as some different mindsets that can actually often get in the way of us really building a rewarding, fulfilled, and creative life for ourselves. Now, we're musicians. That's surely what we're hoping for, isn't it? I think you got a little bit of my background, so I don't want to sort of give you my biography, but just a few highlights, because I think the perspective of my background will hopefully inform where I'm speaking from and how I'm speaking about things. As you know, I'm a cellist. Um, I studied in Manchester. I did five years of study there, and I studied in Switzerland for a year. During that time, I joined the Belcher Quartet right at the beginning, and we were incredibly lucky to have what was an incredibly quick rise. It was timing. There were lots of opportunities that came our way at that time, um, but very quickly, um, we were recording, we were touring around the world, we were performing in the major concert halls and having the most incredible life. And I was in the quartet for 10 years. After that time, I really realized that one of the things I missed, I loved the life of touring, I loved the quartet life, but something that had always been the thing I enjoyed a lot of was teaching. And that idea, not just of coming in and doing one masterclass, but actually having time to work with with students to give back, not just giving back what I'd learned, but actually realizing that for myself, that's when teaching and working with people, that self-reflection is one of the things that, in order to explain something to someone, you learn more about what you do yourself. And that's what I see teaching is one of the most enriching aspects of what I've really ever done. Leaving the quartet, I quickly Started, I became the professor of chamber music here at the school and at the International Institute of Chamber Music for a year at the same time as running the chamber music department in Manchester and then also laterally in London in, at the Guildhall School. The reason I'm saying that is that this was a very different journey to what I'd ever thought. Within a few years, I was dealing with huge budgets. I was dealing with staff. I was dealing with planning. I was dealing with concert programming. I mean, everything. That's not what we're trained for in a music education. But in a way, we are, because the, all these things can be learned. But it's about attitudes. And at the heart of everything I'm going to be talking about is people and relationships. There's one really, well, then I started running YCAT. That's an important part. Young Classical Artists Trust. I've been doing this for 14 years. And the reason I want to talk, just talk about YCAT a little bit is YCAT is a UK charity, not for profit, but that looks after the, the most interesting young artists graduating from school who have the potential for an international career. 
And everything the charity is about is developing, is about unlocking. And it really sits at this intersection between studies and really thinking about what is the real world of our music industry. And that word industry sometimes can feel a bit of a dirty word for us as musicians, but it is a real world. It has lots of aspects like commercial businesses that often we don't like to think about. And one final string, forgive the cliche, string to my bow, um, alongside everything, and again, this is how it informs what I'm going to speak about, is for 10, 12 years now, I've been a psychoanalytic psychotherapist as well. And that sort of really informs how I'm trying to work with people and thinking about motivations. And in a way, it links everything. It links chamber music. It's about listening, connecting, transforming, unlocking. And at the heart of everything I think I now do and think about myself is the ability to try to find space for honest self-reflection. That's an important word, and I'll keep coming back to this. So anyway, what happens next? Before what happens next, before we get into the real world of the music industry, what happens these final few years you're in your formal music studies? When we start to realize that our period of formal studies are actually not endless, sometimes we often think, God, where did all that time go? What have I just been doing? I think that can often spark a little bit of panic in almost everyone when that realization hits. What do we do with that little bit of panic? Do we just push it away, carry on in blissful ignorance until the day we graduate? Do we let it take over and consume us so we end up a complete nervous wreck by the end of our studies? Or can we channel this realization in a much more constructive direction? In the end, that little moment of panic, though it could feel like panic, disguised as panic, I think it's a healthy realization and it's one of our greatest friends that we ignore at our own peril. Before I think about some of the motivations, what are some of the practical options as you come to the end of your studies that everyone starts to think about? First one that everyone talks to me about, competitions. There's big word competitions. Now, some people like them, some people don't. I don't really care about competitions as long as people are thinking about why they want to do a competition. And I think that's the important question often people miss. They look at competitions and think, I need to do this because it's something that's in the profession. Everyone else is doing it. I need to do this one now. There are many reasons to do competitions, local, national, international. It can really push you to expand your repertoire. It can really help provide an experience of really disciplining yourself in a very rigorous way. It could be that the competition opens some what could be possible opportunities. Were you to win it or not, there's no guarantee. Auditions. Look outside already, even your penultimate and your last years of study. Look at what are some of the different opportunities that require auditions. Every time there's an open audition for something, there are deadlines. This may sound really obvious, but I would say 80% of the people I'm talking to at some point say, oh, I missed the deadline. I forgot to look at the deadline. They were applying for this opera scheme or this opera studio or these orchestral editions six months ago. And I'm like, yes, people plan ahead. It's really important not to miss out. And if there's one thing people take away from this, think further ahead. Look at summer schools, look at master classes not just because of different teachers and different opportunities and performance opportunities you may get, but think of these summer schools, these different, whether it's national ones or even international, think about how they are broadening your horizon, they're broadening your base of contacts. You're getting a different perspective outside of this rather small but important aspect of the school, the little bubble that you're existing in. Also, for those of you who maybe aren't, have already realized, you maybe aren't thinking about a performing career. There are so many opportunities everywhere now for internships. These could be a couple of days having work experience. That could be a week's work. That could be over a month. It could be over a whole year. Working in many aspects of the industry. That is such an important opportunity. It doesn't mean this is what you want to do, 
but thinking about what that could tell you and the experiences that could give you, again, about what goes on in the real world. I mentioned it a little bit ago, self-reflection as one of the key things for me. One thing I find myself often trying to get people, students, at this point in college in their studies to think about, how are you looking at yourself in an objective way? And especially be realistic. How do you fit in with your colleagues, with your peers in the studies? Not in a comparing and a judging way, but everyone has strengths. Everyone has areas they want to develop. But you're part of an ecosystem, and this is something I will come back to quite a lot. Look at, when you look at your colleagues' biographies or what they're doing, how often have you sat in a concert and read a biography or a CV, and it literally is just a list of things, and you go, oh, they're doing this, they're doing this, why aren't I doing this? It's very easy to read biographies and beat yourself on the back to say, they're doing this and I'm not doing this. I read biographies and I find them, I look at them almost like a treasure map that has to be unlocked. For every thing that is listed, there is a whole backstory. There are connections between everything in a biography. When you go home at night, look at someone's biography and start to think, oh, they played here. Google it. Have a look at what this festival is, what these masterclasses were, who's involved in it. What's the concert series? What kind of concert series? Ah, this person actually was also playing here, and they played in this one. Ah, maybe that's how that happened. And you start to build this picture of connections. I think when I started and said there are no answers, there are lots of things online to say, if you do this, you will have a good career. If you do this, you'll have a good career. The single most important thing about the music industry are connections and being aware of connections, how people connect with each other. That's so important, but often we forget about it. How can you start to build your own structures, looking outside at what others are doing in a very healthy, inquisitive way? Sometimes when you're still studying, it can be very easy to actually rely on the sort of internal looking at just the course, you're focusing on, I need to do this for my course, I need to graduate, I need to do this. As you get to the end of your studies, I think the more your attention can be put outside on what you're going to be doing, rather than just getting to the end of the studies. Don't wait for other people to contact you. Don't wait for that day of professional life to suddenly hit, and then you go, oh my God, what have I just been doing for two years? Use the time you have now to start thinking about the opportunities that are out there and create a plan for yourself. I often think, when I was talking about the biography, the treasure map, I like to think about every musician is their own little ecosystem, or almost like a spider's web. You know these wonderful mind maps that you can see? Um, if you think of yourself in the middle, it can feel quite daunting. We all feel a bit alone sometimes, think, I don't really know anyone. Where am I going to go? But the minute you put yourself there, you look at who are the people around you already who are helping you. And then you take each person and you think, ah, but they're doing this, and they do this, and they're connected to this person and this person. And you start to build a much bigger picture. And then you will start to see the connections yourself. And what this can do is give you real confidence that you're not actually on your own. You're already much more connected, I'm convinced, than a lot of you may feel you are. Another question, as you're still studying, I think is really important. It's a difficult question, but where do I really want to see myself? What do I really enjoy and get pleasure from? And then the most challenging question, which I'm, not, I'm only going to put the question there and I'm not going to say any more about it, but it's an important one. Who are you doing this for? So once you're out there and you have this moment of, help, what do I do? Give yourself a structure. You've been part of a structure. 
you've always fitted into a course. The most scary thing for a lot of people, once they for musicians, once they graduate, is how do I spend my time? And you can start thinking day by day. Start thinking, what do I really want to be doing in a year's time? Now, it might not get there, but start giving yourself an idea. Look ahead, then start working backwards. What do I need to now do in six months in order to get there? What do I need to do in three months' time to get to six months? What do I need to do every month? What do I need to do every week? What do I need to do every day? That could be making more contacts. That could be researching some different things. That could be applying for additions, for internships, for whatever you want to do. But have a plan. It's so important. Um, and it's something a lot of people often forget about. One of the most frequently asked questions to me is, how do I get an agent? My first answer is, why do you need or want an agent? What is the agent going to do for you that you cannot do for yourself? Agents do not like to think of themselves as glorified secretaries. But I, unfortunately, a lot of artists graduating have this idea that if you get an agent, the agent gives you a career. There's one fundamental issue with commercial management which people forget about, which is they need to make money. How are you going to make an agent money? And if you're not going to make them money, why would they work for you? We have a glorified impression that they just will want to work with this artist because they believe in the artistry. That's nice in one way, but they need to make money. Think about it. Money's an important question once we graduate for musicians. It's not a well-paid profession in any country. No matter, some countries are slightly different. The UK, I can tell you, it's really not well-paid. However, it's still, in comparison to lots of other professions, there is a huge sacrifice there, but we're doing this because we have a passion. However, money is important. The question about how much money do we need comes to everyone at some point in their lives. How long and how realistic can your ambition go if you're not earning any money? How much do you need money? How much do you need a comfortable life? These are not bad questions. They're important questions which will allow you to think carefully about what it is you're doing and where you're focusing your energy. What gets you out of bed in the morning? How often do we ask ourselves that? And especially as musicians, we're so often We've been on a treadmill that this is what we do. And a lot of musicians who have been struggling for a few years after they've graduated, it dawns on them after quite a long time that some of them have stopped enjoying what they're doing. They've just been doing it because this is what they've been programmed to do for a long time. And it can feel very liberating to start asking yourself, what is it that I really enjoy? So many people ask me, I want a successful career. I say to them, what about a fulfilling career? Think about that difference. It's a really important one. For me, the more fulfilled you are, the more successful you will be. There are so many options in this industry. Solo, chamber, orchestral, ensemble. Think about the many different types of ensemble playing for instrumentalists. Teaching, I've already talked about how important I feel teaching is. Health and well-being, that link between health and music. And in every country, there is so much interesting work. And I think we'll hear some of that in a minute from some of the people. Community work within the industry itself. There are options to work in programming and festivals, recording, venues, arts policy, research, innovation, technology. It's endless. The industry is huge really, really vast and interesting, and the skills that we learn through our performance training really adapt us to fit into almost all of these things. You can learn how to do something, but the core skills of actually being able to communicate with people and think about what it is you're passionate about, they are really important. Be versatile, be open to any opportunity that presents itself to you. This is the time to try everything. It mu Even if you find it's not something you want to do, by going through a process of trying something, what you do get 
is a much stronger sense of where you then want to go. Don't close any doors. Again, I've talked about ecosystem, networks. The most obvious network is social media, something we all use. Think about the platforms you're using. And more importantly than that, think about who it is you're wanting to talk to. Who are you wanting to communicate with? Think about who you're speaking to. What are you saying about yourself? And is that really what this person wants to hear? If you were that person, would you be looking, what would you be hoping to hear from social media? Again, this is an attitude I find a lot, which is just putting stuff out because this is what you want to say, rather than really thinking about who you want to receive. It's very, very important. This applies to everything. Social media it applies to marketing, it applies to fundraising. I don't know any musician who at some point has not had to find a way of applying for money for something. It's not about pushing yourself on someone, it's about listening to what someone else is interested in and being able to adapt yourself to fit into what they are looking for. This clock already went to red for me. I'm going to do a few more minutes. Just round up, obviously there's a lot more I could be saying. I want to just give some of the questions again which are so important for me and which I often find myself asking people, both while studying and as they're finishing and entering the profession. Who am I doing this for? Why am I doing this? Who does it benefit? What do I hope to achieve if things really go to plan? What do I need to do in order to give this the best chance of being fulfilled? Is there anything that's going to get in my way? Is there any difficulties I can imagine happening? Are these difficulties something that I can do something about myself? Do I need to ask for help? Do I need to change what I'm doing? What's next? We can get so obsessed with thinking of just getting to the end goal, we forget about where it could then lead to. Curiosity, be curious, have courage to honestly reflect and ask yourself some of these difficult questions. No one else is going to do it for you. Be interested in other people. Treat them respectfully. Always say thank you. Sounds obvious, but it's incredible how many musicians unfortunately forget to say thank you. Listen to others. Don't push yourself too, too much on people. You never know where someone is going to end up. People change jobs. Just because you've maybe had a tricky relationship with someone, don't be rude to them. It's amazing how many musicians are, unfortunately. And I'm a musician I see all the time. But these people might end up five years later being the one person that can offer you the one thing you want. Always be respectful of people. Build your networks, keep the antennae out, build that ecosystem and be genuine. Be genuine as a musician and as a person. People immediately can sniff, can sense when someone is being inauthentic, either as a musician, trying to play in a way that they think someone wants, or trying to push a project that they don't really believe in. Only do something when it feels right for you. And my final thing, which someone asked me years ago, what's the, if there was one bit of advice you could give to people from your own experience, and I thought, and then I hadn't thought, thought in this way, but I found myself saying this, because everything that's happened in my life happened because looking back on it, I was open enough to take a risk with things that happened that I least expected to be offered to me. You never know what's hiding around the next corner. Take the risk, be open to it, don't just close yourself off. You never know where it might take you. Thank you.